Hey y'all, this is almost going to be like a part two vlog because I had a friend ask me about what exactly is sin. And I was just talking about that and I thought, you know, I need to, I need to clarify this. Sin is doing anything that isn't God's way. God tells us what his way is in the, in the word of God. First of all, Jesus, who is God in, um, John chapter 14 tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. But not only is he the way, the truth, and the life, he's the way to the truth and the life. He is truth. He is life. But he's also the way to everything. He is God. And so his way is the way we're supposed to follow. It, what the Word of God tells us, since he is the Word of God incarnate when he was here on earth, um, what defines sin is when you are not, here's the best way to put it, rebellion against God or sin is when you go your own way. That's what Eve did. Her own choice, her own life, her own lifestyle, her own way of doing things to listen to God and something else instead of just completely dependent on God and whatever he says. And he said to her, I don't want you to know. What was the tree she took of? People always say, the knowledge of evil. I'm like, no, that's, that's not what it was. Think again. Look again. Don't think again. Look again. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So she just didn't find out about the evil of life, all the terrible evil of life. That's not all. She found out about the good. And so you say, well, what was wrong with that? Before that, Adam and Eve didn't know anything. They didn't even know they were naked, right? They didn't even know. Remember when um, God asked them, how'd you know you were naked? How'd you know you were naked? He says, we were hiding from you. He says, I, we were naked. And he says, how'd you know you were naked? Do you get that? Do you get the seriousness and the simplicity of that? They didn't even know they were naked. Guys, if you look down, you see you're naked. They didn't know anything. And you think, how could you not? Think how pure you'd have to be to not know anything. Do you know that's where God wants us to get back to? Back to the garden? He wants us to get back to a place of complete and utter faith. Faith is trust to the level of walking in it. Walking out your faith will be the toughest thing you ever do in your life because you must deny your flesh. Remember when John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. He wasn't just talking about the fact that he'd been doing all this you know, discipling and baptizing of people. Um, his teaching was um, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, meaning Christ is coming. But the big thing is to repent. Repent from what? Your own way. Don't go your own way. I know I, there's wonderful songs about you can go your own way. And there's all kinds of um, self-help and all kinds of uh, your own way of thinking and, and um, become who you're, you are to yourself be true. It's like, no, no, that's mankind's way, but that's not God's way. God said, I, you can't please me. You can't please me, Beth, without faith. And do you know what he means by that? Perfect trust. It's like, well, Lord, then give me that, that level of faith because that's scary to ask for that. But only in the flesh, though, is it scary. You know what it makes you do? This is easy for me to say. It's hard for all of us, including me, to do. To trust God to teach you faith. To trust God to say, you know what? I know that the only real way I can have joy in this life, and the more I do this, the more joy I'll have, even through heartache, is to keep my eyes fully fixed on you so that no matter what happens, 
I don't care what happens, even on my own body, I wouldn't even know about my own body being naked if all I look at is you, 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 dear Lord God. I, I live in the flesh in this world just like Adam and Eve, but I am going to keep my eyes focused on you, and that is what I'm going to do. And people say, well, you got to uh, be in the Spirit. Well, let me tell you something. The more you rely on the Lord, you will live more in the Spirit and less in the flesh. And I believe that's part of what John may have meant. I must decrease. He must increase. Me got to die so he can live. I, I can't stand to hear preachers who say um, that it, to, to get um, salvation doesn't cost you anything. It costs you one thing. You ready? You ready? everything you got to give your everything up and say lord you know what it's no longer my way i don't care what that sacrifice is that i gotta make it's no longer my way it's your way if you have sinned um here's a great example i sinned in getting a divorce and remarrying and people say no man this is wonderful yeah he's wonderful but Jesus said, don't get a divorce. And if you do, don't remarry. And if you do remarry, remarry who you divorced. I didn't do that. I went directly against God. I asked him to forgive me. And he felt, forgave me as far as the east is from the west. And you know what? I will never get divorced again. And I will never get remarried again. Right now, I'm in a state of marriage. And I'm going to give that marriage to God. And I'm, and I'm going to keep focused on God, not my husband. Now, I love my husband. He's second. He's second then the kids then the church more important than all of that focusing on God I pray he brings people to me who don't know him my husband knows God so that's done my kids know God I hope they, they don't ever turn away my grandkids so far all know God I pray they never turn away because I, I believe that if you do an about face and you say you know what I don't want you Lord I, and people say well but you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit if you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit I don't think you can say that I don't um, you can't turn if the Holy Spirit lives in you you cannot turn from God and think it's okay that, that'll never happen and you sure can't walk into heaven saying I don't believe in God so there's that once saved always saved question if you are ever really saved, if you have ever truly given the Holy Spirit your mind, your heart, your life, and said, you're in charge, there'll be times you screw up and do things out of just selfish flesh. We still got this to fight. Um, that's why we don't have perfect self-control. Because perfect self-control, as soon as I asked the Holy Spirit to come and live in me, and I really did ask him to, he did. But sometimes I don't listen to him. And I could control myself better than I do because he speaks to me and I'll purposely ignore him so I can go ahead and eat that fattening food and we giggle about it but, but that or or eat that fattening drink or not exercise when I know I should or not go to sleep when I know my body needs it I'm not taking care of my body the part that I could do I'm not saying I'll never get a disease or anything but there's parts I could do that I don't and it's not a funny matter it can give you diabetes and heart disease and things that are going to kill you so it's like no that's not cute that's not funny I know we do that sometimes I do that and I'm sorry when I do that because I do know I need to take it more seriously there's people who have terrible health conditions and they wish they could do something about it because it's not something that they could make a difference on. They're doing all the healthy things they can, but they just got a disease and there's nothing they can do. They wish for that and, and we take it so flippantly. We shouldn't. I shouldn't. So, what is sin? Well, there's lots of things in the Bible that are defined in a paragraph or two. And those are very definitely, whether you want to hear it or not, whether I want to hear it or not, sin but there's other things that are sin that the holy spirit will define to you and, and what is sin sin is anything that is not um what god wants anything that is not obedience to god anything that's in rebellion to god and that includes your pride and your desire to have your own life to have your own way 
to, if you ever notice when little children, you know, they get all selfish, we, we think how immature they are. And as people get older and older and they get more and more selfless, we think of them as more mature and more wise and that kind of person we'd like to be. They're not just maturing in the flesh, they're maturing in the spirit when they're like that. And, and the, when you see someone younger like that, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so unusual to see that. Yes, it is. Because the flesh is quite a talker. The flesh is quite influential over us. God made the flesh. He loves the flesh. But the flesh is what got messed up. And God can have the Holy Spirit come live in us and turn that around. If we will submit our will and our way to his will and his way. And the best thing, best way to do that is to get in the word of God and just meditate on it night and day. Every single morning, during the day, at night. People say, you brainwash yourself with the Word of God? Absolutely. If not, the world will definitely brainwash you. Brainwash your kids with the Word of God? Absolutely. If not, the world will definitely brainwash your kids. You better be telling them. Your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor. And people say, well, it's really none of my business. It's all of your business. You just got to ask the Holy Spirit, what's the way to do this? That I would be heard in the way that you want this person to be heard. Because sometimes you can do more to push someone away than to draw them close to God because you're doing it in your own way, in your own flesh, versus the Holy Spirit guiding you. He knows when someone's ready and when they're listening. You don't. So when you try to force feed food to something, what happens? They can't take it. Or neither can people's spirit. If you try to force something on them and they have not been prepared by the Holy Spirit to take it, they're not going to receive it. So that's why you, first of all, need to worry. And I need to worry. Are you still there? It's still going. Well, that was quite a jostle. We were jostled, weren't we? They're still working on the roads. But anyway, we have to be so in tune to the Lord ourself. That's our biggest first concern. Don't worry about other people. Worry about yourself. Well, I love my husband. I need to worry. Don't worry about it. Well, I love my children. Yeah, don't worry about it. Right now, you just need to worry about you and God that you know his voice so well, you cannot be tricked by the enemy imitating him that's first and foremost and for one thing pray that every single day lord let me hear your voice and your voice alone i don't want to be like eve i don't want my own way i don't want to be like adam and listen to someone else i want to just listen to you please teach me your voice i will stay in your word uh whether it's through electronic whether it's a bible however you're going to do it just get pick what my friend said i have so many bibles she goes best just pick one and get in it um that's why I want to get Bibles out to people. Get in the Word. If you don't have one and you got a phone, go to, um, there's Bible Gateway. There's CARM, C-A-R-M dot org, which has, is full of scripture and teaching you about different things about our faith and the, and the um, essentials. There's a bunny on the side of the road. I hope he runs the other way. Um, I can't think of the name of it. There's apps that are Bible apps. Is where I can't think of the name of it. It's called the Bible, I think. But it's also or the Bible. Anyway, you can get an electronic Bible if you don't have a physical one. But I've always told you guys, you don't got a physical Bible. You just let me know. Even if it's not a contest. Okay? Anyway, so that's part two. Love y'all. Bye!